Okay. So we want to uh, predict uh, how human uh, uh, individuals behave. And uh, we can think of different uh, situations where these apply. So you have a uh, uh, different situation in which uh, 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 people may um, interact with uh, another person or more persons. And uh, each of these person uh, uh, is, uh, is confronted with a strategic decision because the outcome does not only depend on what uh, he does, uh, but also on how uh, the other people behave. Okay, and, and so in some sense, uh, what you have to do is to predict uh, how uh, other people are going to behave and behave uh, in an optimal manner. Okay, so this is what uh, uh, game theory is, uh, is about. Okay, so uh, how do you formalize uh, a game? Well, one way of thinking about a game uh, is uh, uh, you look at the prototype system of a game, which is uh, chess. Okay, so in, in chess, you have uh, the players, uh, and there are some uh, rules. And these rules uh, have to do with uh, um, what actions, uh, what possible actions uh, can uh, each player do at each uh, uh, point in time and uh, with uh, information. What does each player knows uh, at each uh, 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 point in time, okay? And then uh, uh, the, what agents uh, choose uh, is actually uh, strategies. And uh, a strategy is a, a contingent plan of action. So for example, if you think about chess, uh, so players uh, do not choose uh, just uh, actions uh, independently at each time, but they follow a particular strategy or, or uh, for example, for the openings, you know, there are different codified strategies. And a, a strategy is uh, a, a contingent plan of action, which means uh, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sequence of actions that depend on the action of uh, the other player, of the other players, uh, the previous action of the other players, and depend on also on the information that uh, uh, the agent has. Okay, so a strategy is a function uh, in a very high uh, dimensional space. And then you have also to define the outcomes. So when is it that the game ends? And uh, what are the payoffs uh, that uh, each player receives when the uh, game ends? So one important, uh, very important thing uh, uh, that uh, you assume is what is called uh, uh, common knowledge. Common knowledge is uh, what uh, everybody knows and what everybody knows that everybody knows and what everybody knows that everybody knows that everybody knows. So it's something that is, uh, uh, yes, common knowledge, okay? And what we assume is that uh, uh, the, the rules of the game and the strategies and the outcomes, uh, the payoffs, uh, this is all common knowledge. So everybody, uh, every player, knows uh, what the rules are, okay? And also, uh, we assume that uh, um, uh, each player assumes uh, that the other players is rational and they are rational themselves. And they know that the other player knows that uh, they are rational. And they know that the other players knows that they know that the other player is rational, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so rationality is common knowledge. So this is very important. So, um, and uh, under this, uh, uh, so in game theory is essentially uh, a theory that predicts uh, how players will behave, uh, how players will play this game uh, under these uh, assumptions, okay? 
So let's see how it works. So this is a very simple uh, 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 game, which is called uh, Match in Pennies. There are two players, player one and player two. So player one uh, chooses uh, uh, the side of a coin, whether it's head or tail. And player two also chooses the side of the coin, whether it's uh, head or tail. And the player one wins uh, uh, if uh, the uh, two coins are different, if the two sides of the coins are different, and player two wins if they are the same, okay? So one way of uh, representing uh, uh, the, uh, this game is what is called uh, an extensive form game. An extensive form game can be uh, represented uh, as a as a graph where you have uh, the um, action nodes uh, so the nodes uh, where uh, at uh, each of these nodes one of the two players have to take an action then uh, uh, links uh, correspond to the possible action that an agent can uh, can take so uh, here is player one he has to choose whether his uh, coin will be head or tail. And then depending on two, it's time uh, for a player two to decide whether this coin will be head or tail. And then depending on this, uh, each of them uh, will receive payoff. Uh, and uh, here, this is the payoff of player one, which is minus one because the two uh, coins are the same. And this is the... Uh, uh, payoff uh, of uh, player uh, two, okay? So, uh, and as you can see, uh, the, uh, so this is the way in which you can uh, represent uh, any game. Of course, you can also represent uh, chess in this way, but you will have a, a very, very complex uh, 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 tree, no? a very, very complex graph. Okay, so the strategies are, as I told you, are uh, contingent plans of action. So in this case, uh, a strategy for player two will be to play head if the other guy, if player one played head, and to play tail if player one played tail. So, uh, um, so you see that uh, a strategy is a, uh, is, a, um, is a plan, is a, is, a, is a way to respond that depends on the action of the other agent, okay? Now, in this case, uh, we assume that uh, uh, player two knows, uh, so information is also important. Here we assume that player two knows uh, uh, what player one uh, chooses before he makes his choice. But you could also think about actually matching pennies uh, game is typically played uh, simultaneously. So where player two does not know what uh, um, uh, what is the choice of player one? Okay, so uh, in this case, uh, uh, in game theory, in extensive form game theory, one represents this fact that, that uh, agent two is does not know whether is uh, in this position or in this position by drawing these uh, information sets. So these information sets, you you should think of them. Uh, as a, a cloud of fog that uh, makes it impossible for player two to understand whether he's uh, at this point or at this point. Okay. Okay. So the uh, so these are extensive form game, but then uh, uh, given an extensive form game, uh, you can uh, uh, figure out what are the possible strategies. And then uh, you can uh, represent uh, a, a, the same game in terms of uh, uh, what are called uh, uh, what is called a normal form game. And the normal form game is uh, uh, this uh, form. So you have uh, a set of strategy, 
SI, that as I told you are say plans of actions. And uh, you list all of them. And then uh, uh, you list all of them also for your opponents. Uh, here, this S minus I means uh, the strategies of all the other opponents. So uh, you have uh, a set of uh, possible strategy for agent I, and then uh, you can build uh, the set of all possible strategies for all the other players. And then uh, uh, the strategy of the opponent will be an element of this set. And, and so you can fully define your game by defining directly what is the payoff for, for each player I if you play strategy SI against strategy S minus I. Okay? And this is a, a real function, it corresponds to these numbers here. Okay? So this is essentially how you define a, a, a game in a game theory. So this is a, a celebrated uh, example, which is called the prisoner's dilemma. And you can think uh, uh, this is a formalization of the situation of uh, uh, Bonnie and Clyde, uh, which was in the uh, first slide. And the story goes that uh, say, if uh, player one and player two uh, imagine that player one and player two are, uh, say, uh, uh, caught uh, uh, and they are uh, uh, um, charged of having committed a crime. So player one has the possibility of uh, to, um, to, to, to confess to the police and to say that uh, uh, the other guy, player two, did commit the crime and uh, or to stay silent okay uh, not to say anything not to confess in this case uh, the strategy c is not to confess uh, and the strategy d which is called uh, uh, defect uh, to defect and then c is, uh, stands for cooperate uh, i mean cooperate uh, with player two uh, uh, strategy d is uh, the one where uh, player one confesses. Okay, so, and if uh, they both uh, don't confess, uh, they stay in prison for, uh, uh, for a while, but then they are released. If uh, player one confesses and player two does not, uh, then he will get free, he will be free, but player uh, uh, two will go in jail for a long period, say nine years, okay? But if they both confess, they both will go uh, in prison for, say, six years. So you can represent, uh, uh, in this simple case, uh, this, uh, play, this game in normal form uh, with this table, where uh, uh, in each cell you put uh, the first number is the payoff of uh, the first player given the strategy that the first player chooses and the second player chooses. And in the second uh, number, you put the payoff of the uh, second uh, guy, okay? Okay, so now uh, you can think uh, clearly that if you look at this situation, well, it is clear what they should do because uh, uh, if they both uh, do not confess, if they both cooperate, uh, they would just uh, uh, spend uh, one year uh, in prison, or say a small amount in prison, and then they will get uh, uh, free. But actually, uh, what happens in this case is that uh, um, uh, whatever uh, uh, player um, uh, one does, it is always uh, best for player two to defect or to, in this case, to confess. Because imagine that player one does not uh, 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 confess, so he cooperates. Then uh, if he cooperates, player two would get minus one, but if he defects, uh, he will get zero. So it is better for him to play uh, defect, okay? And what if uh, a player one defects? Then uh, if he cooperates, he would get minus nine. 
And if it affects, you would get minus six, okay? So whatever player one does, player two will be better off by defecting. And the same is true for player one. So the, uh, the outcome is that uh, um, uh, in, in spite of the fact that this would be the best outcome for both of the players, because they are rational, they will end up uh, playing uh, this, uh, um, uh, they will end up in this situation, okay? And this is because uh, uh, this uh, uh, strategy C is dominated by strategy D because uh, uh, whatever the opponent does, uh, strategy D always gives a higher payoff. So one idea of uh, finding out how uh, players uh, uh, play games uh, is to look at uh, uh, dominated uh, uh, strategies and to eliminate uh, these uh, dominated strategies. And, uh, and then the prediction would be that what remains is what uh, uh, players will play. And you can do this uh, uh, process uh, iteratively and uh, look for some strategy which is dominated by some other strategy and, uh, and, and eliminate, it, uh, eliminate them uh, iteratively. And in this way, you can think of solving uh, uh, the game. Uh, so maybe it's a good time to ask uh, if there are questions. Yes, Professor, can I, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, please. Okay, so I I saw the uh, I saw the lectures earlier and I'm loving them. Uh, I think they're really mind blowing, at least in my estimation. So regarding uh, the prisoner's dilemma, for instance, but also other things that we discussed about, it struck me as a bit odd that we've now. I'm this is maybe a naive question. Maybe I'm getting a bit ahead of myself, but we never once mentioned the concept of uh, trustworthiness, trust. And it seems to me that by introducing this, a lot of the okay. uh, so, so-called dilemmas. Uh, so, uh, Carlos, so uh, now we are talking about Bonnie and Clyde. They love each other, okay? And they say, and they can promise to them, to each other, uh, look, uh, I will, uh, uh, I will never uh, betray you. I will never confess, okay? Yes. But when uh, they get into, uh, when they are caught and they talk to the police, uh, uh, should they really trust the other guy or not? I mean, okay. if they are really rational, and this is the assumption that we are making, then uh, no matter uh, uh, what, uh, uh, what they promised each other, yeah, but I mean, they, they, behave, they will behave in this way. I mean, the, the issue of trust is something that we will come back, uh, um, uh, uh, that we will come back, uh, because okay. it's a very important one. Yes, and, and also, yeah. it, it struck me also that, well, the um, argument for Bonnie and Clyde, that seems to be true, but I think it can only hold up in isolated single um, instantiation, like in single games, because... Exactly. If the games are iterated, then exactly. this yes. this sort of argument cannot work because if I work with someone and I snitch on them, uh, well, no, exactly. Yes, exactly. Okay. You are uh, precisely right. So we are talking about a single stage game, a situation ah, okay. where player one and player two um, uh, imagine they didn't meet before and they will never meet again. Okay. Okay, and then uh, in that case, uh, uh, everything that player one says to player two in this kind of game uh, should not be trusted. Okay, okay. There, there is no reason why uh, player two should trust player one or vice versa. So it's not credible. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. So everyone is a bit psychopathic in these uh, scenarios. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, uh, concept uh, of trust, uh, there is a question from uh, Ayush uh, Gautam. Uh, are all concepts concept like trust considered irrational? 
I assume rational decision take only the possi possible outcomes into account. So uh, let me turn this question the other way around. So, um, um, so in game theory, you uh, try to find uh, whether uh, there are incentives uh, that support trust. So, so is uh, trust uh, uh, supported by incentives? So imagine that, uh, say, um, uh, I may tell you, look, uh, either you give me 100 euros uh, or I will jump out of the window, okay? And, uh, and of course, you should not trust me because, uh, I mean, jumping out of the window is against my own interest, okay? Then, of course, I mean, I'm not considering all the psychological di uh, dimension, the fact that I may be crazy, et cetera, et cetera. But if you just uh, think of uh, rational behavior, then you should not trust me, okay? Sorry, there was another question. Uh, so now there is a there is a Rajat uh, asking why are uh, uh, in prisoners dilemma why they are not using backward induction. Okay, so this is going ahead. I mean, uh, backward induction uh, is uh, a, one other strategy in which you can solve uh, um, uh, in which you can solve games. Uh, like uh, uh, this one, for example. Um, I mean, if you start from the, uh, from the top of the tree, you can find out uh, what is the best option for player two and then uh, uh, figure out uh, uh, what, what is the payoff that uh, 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 player two will, will get in this point uh, and in this point, and then you can figure out what player one will do, okay? So this is called uh, backward induction. Now in uh, uh, prisoner's dilemma, things are very easy because uh, there is a dominated strategy. So you don't need to use uh, uh, backward induction. And if you use backward induction, you get uh, uh, at uh, the same, at the same uh, outcome. Uh, so uh, players cooperate and they are charged for what they were caught for. Ah, okay, so you are answering to um, another question. So uh, yes, yeah. other questions? Let me see uh, if... Uh, um, So, it's, but what is uh, minus six, uh, minus six? Yes, so you have been asked, uh, answered by uh, people. So we think about these numbers here as being uh, uh, a payoff. Say so you can think of this as a monetary reward uh, or uh, as a, uh, uh, yeah, uh, anything, uh, anything else, okay? Okay, so uh, very good. So, um, so the problem with uh, iterated elimination of uh, dominated strategies uh, uh, is that it doesn't work always. So, and so uh, what John Nash did uh, was uh, at a certain point uh, to uh, formalize what is a good notion of a solution uh, for a game. And this solution is called a Nash equilibrium. So and you say that uh, uh, a, a strategy profile, profile means uh, that this is a this, uh, this S uh, is, uh, is a list of strategies uh, for each of the players. This is a Nash equilibrium. If for all players and for all strategies uh, of all these players, uh, the payoff of player I, if he plays another strategy, which is different from the strategy he plays in the Nash equilibrium cannot be larger. So this means that uh, each player has no incentive to deviate from uh, a Nash equilibrium strategy. 
אוקיי? Does the early represented game concept apply for games with low amount of payoffs when the game is based on a morality question? Based on experience, which participation with this game, uh, these uh, types of game, it's easy to select the morality uh, correct decision if the payoff difference is not large, especially monetary. So, respect, with respect to this, we will come to that. Uh, uh, about uh, discussing about, uh, say, uh, morality. At the moment, we are not considering morality. We are just considering uh, what should rational uh, players do, okay? Okay, so uh, Nash equilibrium is a situation uh, such that uh, no players has incentive uh, to deviate uh, from this uh, uh, setting, okay? And uh, one way in which you can find this Nash equilibria is by uh, uh, finding uh, um, uh, the best response. So you, you define the best response of agent I to the strategy of uh, her opponents as uh, the strategy that maximizes his utility or her utility given the strategy of the other opponent. So this is the best response. Okay, and uh, uh, if you think a little bit about it, so the Nash equilibrium is equivalent to saying that uh, my best response, uh, so I should play the best response to the best response of my opponents. Okay, or in other words, uh, that the Nash equilibrium is a fixed point uh, of this uh, best response uh, correspondence of this best response uh, mapping, okay? And so, uh, for example, in the prisoner's dilemma, you see that, uh, well, the best response uh, for player uh, uh, two is uh, always the fact, uh, is the fact and the fact, uh, whether uh, uh, player one plays C or D, and the same is true for player one, so that uh, uh, you see this is a fixed point uh, of uh, uh, the best response uh, uh, correspondences, okay? Very good. So now uh, I want you to uh, play a game. Uh, just look at this game and find uh, what is uh, the uh, Nash equilibrium. Then you should go to this site and uh, you should uh, insert this code and uh, submit your answer. So let's see uh, whether you've got uh, the concept of Nash equilibrium right. So I'll uh, wait until uh, we have collected uh, um, enough uh, responses, okay? Say we are, uh, uh, at the moment, we are 118. Let's see, I want to see at least 50 responses. I think probably you also need to add. Uh, uh, the screen has disappeared. Hello? Hello, the screen has disappeared. Yes, let me put it again on. Uh, what is it? Uh, um, uh, what is it? Uh -oh. ah. So, Uh, I cannot find uh, what is key. We don't know. Oh. 
Okay, here it is. So here is the game. So uh, I still see five answers only. So come on. Only five answers. You can do better, for <laughs> sure. Okay. Six answers. Come on, seven. Okay, you are thinking very hard at this problem. So 12, 13, come on. Okay. Oh, okay, so, uh, okay, now you, I think you can vote. Sorry, it's the first time I'm uh, using this thing. Yeah? Okay, we have uh, uh, just two answers for the moment. Uh, now, uh, okay, so, Now, seven answers. Mm. Okay, now things are a little bit changing. So let me stop when there are 20 answers. We are at 15. Okay, so maybe uh, what I can do is uh, to share with you uh, I don't know if I can share with you the results. So, um, no. Okay, so uh, I think uh, we are, uh, so let me summarize for you what uh, the results are. We have uh, 34 answers. So the correct answer is uh, this one, is 3-3, three, three, because this is uh, the best response. Uh, you see, if uh, player one plays B, uh, then uh, uh, player two, the best option for player two is to play R, okay? And if player two plays R, then uh, the best response for player one is to play B. So this is the Nash equilibrium. So this got 44% uh, uh, of the votes. Okay, so at least the major, I mean, uh, almost the majority of you got it right. Then uh, there was a large part of you, 36% uh, said that the Nash equilibrium is this one. But you see that uh, say, if uh, for example, player one plays, uh, 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 top, uh, the strategy T, then player two would be better off by playing C. Okay, so this is not the best strategy of uh, uh, player two. And uh, if player uh, uh, two plays L, player one uh, would like to switch uh, to, uh, to five, okay? So this is not a Nash equilibrium. Although the payoffs are larger than uh, in the Nash equilibrium. Then, uh, um, uh, Professor? Yeah? But if player one plays uh, top, 
and player two plays center, then player one wins. So why would player two prefer C? No, because uh, uh, because uh, then uh, T is not a best response. Uh, sorry, C is not a best response uh, to T. So the best response uh, of uh, player two, if player one plays T, is L. L. Yes. Okay. Yes. But if player two plays L, player one would like to play M. Okay. 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 And yes. if player one plays M. Player two would like to play C. And if player two plays C, player one would like to play uh, T. Okay. 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 So, and you are in this, uh, uh, in this loop. Okay. So there is no, uh, there is no uh, Nash equilibrium in this sense. Okay. Is it clear? Yes, 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 yes. Thank you. Okay, so thank you very much for uh, uh, this uh, uh, exercise. I think uh, you, uh, since you liked it, uh, then uh, I think uh, we are going to uh, go to the issue of, uh, um, okay, so this was the, the right response and these are the best responses. You, you can see that there is no fixed point here. Now, uh, let's go to another uh, simple exercise, which is uh, the ultimatum game. And this brings me to the issue of morality. Okay, so now um, the, the ultimatum game is as follows. So there are two people, so Alice and Bob. Alice uh, is, uh, has the possibility to get 100 euros and, uh, and the choice uh, he, uh, she has to make uh, is, uh, is to give uh, a, a, an amount of this uh, to Bob. Now Bob uh, can decide either to accept or to refuse. So if Bob refuses, then uh, uh, they will both get nothing. But if Bob accepts, then uh, uh, he will get what Alice gives you and Alice will keep the rest, okay? So you should think again that Alice and Bob are rational and uh, that they never met each other and they will never meet again. They are not brothers and sisters. They are not uh, wife and husband or anything. Uh, and this is the payoff uh, of, uh, uh, I mean, is the payoff matrix, okay? This is the game. So the strategy of Alice uh, goes from zero, one, two, up to 100. This is how much she decides to give to, um, uh, to Bob. And the strategy of Bob is either to accept or to refuse. So again, think about what is the Nash equilibrium and then go to uh, Slido and uh, uh, submit your answer. Uh, okay, so very good. So we have five answers. Uh oh. Eighteen answers. Okay, this is very interesting. Okay, so very good. Okay, so uh, we have uh, uh, almost uh, thirty-three answers, but I think uh, the result uh, is very clear. Okay. So the vast majority of you thinks uh, that uh, the uh, Nash equilibrium should be 50-50. So Alice uh, should give to Bob uh, 50 euros and keep uh, 50 uh, for herself. 66% uh, 
think that uh, this uh, should be the rational outcome. Now, uh, actually, the Nash equilibrium is, uh, uh, is when Alice gives uh, zero to Bob and uh, Bob uh, uh, accepts, because essentially you see in this situation where Alice, what is the best response of Alice? What is the best response of uh, Bob if, uh, um, if Alice uh, gives zero? Well, the best response is both accept and refuse, okay? So that this, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, this is uh, a Nash equilibrium, okay? So the best response of, uh, uh, of Bob is always to accept whatever Alice offers, uh, whatever Alice offers, because whatever is better than nothing, okay? Is this clear? Now you see the tension between what is uh, rational and what is fair. You may say, well, this Nash equilibrium is not very fair, okay, because Alice uh, is uh, very stingy. So it is not uh, behaving uh, properly, okay? So, and indeed, uh, if you do experiments like uh, what we have done on the ultimatum game, you find out that uh, um, um, most of the people will not play the Nash equilibrium. And there is a lot of uh, uh, people who have uh, been uh, uh, thinking about why is it that people do not play uh, the Nash equilibrium? Are, aren't they rational? Aren't they play rationally? And uh, there are a lot of uh, 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 answers to this. Huh? One reason is that uh, actually when we are in a strategic context, uh, we do not really think hard about how to behave, but we apply social norms. And as a social norm, being generous is a, is a good social norm. That because essentially, and we have learned this because of reciprocity. So because if I'm uh, kind with you, you will be kind with me. And uh, if I'm kind uh, with a person in the street, uh, a uh, person in the streets uh, will be kind with me. This is a norm of the society, okay? So, but this has nothing to do with, uh, uh, with, uh, with rationality or it needs a different explanation. Uh, uh, if you want to explain this behavior, that is not explained by uh, rationality. Excuse me. Yeah, please. Uh, in this game, does Bob uh, know about the deal? Uh, he knows about the amount of uh, money? Yes, and, yes, yes. Uh, that is common knowledge. That, so so it, he knows? He knows, yes. So uh, you would think uh, that uh, Bob uh, uh, refuses uh, because uh, he gets offended or because uh, he wants to punish Alice. So these are not uh, uh, rational behaviors. Um, but if uh, if the if Bob knows about the amount, it is very probable that refusing the um, the deal when Alice uh, gave him nothing. Yes. So so indeed uh, indeed the, the issue is uh, uh, the the issue is exactly this. So that. Uh, uh, in this type of situation, Alice uh, should not assume that Bob is rational. And so she should not behave in a rational manner. Okay? So that probably uh, she should think, uh, well, maybe if I give him uh, 10, he will not refuse. Ah, uh, I see. And uh, so if I give him, uh, say, then, of course, uh, maybe Alice uh, can frame uh, this uh, offer in a particular way and, uh, and Bob will accept. I don't know. <laughs> but CJ, the, the point is that if Alice knows that Bob is rational and Bob knows that Alice is rational, 
then uh, uh, Bob should not get offended by Ali's behavior because she's behaving rationally. And, uh, and he should accept uh, even uh, if uh, it gets uh, uh, zero. I see. Okay. Thank so you. the issue is uh, really game theory deals with uh, uh, describing the behavior of rational uh, uh, individuals. Okay. But there are situations where uh, it is not reasonable to believe that people are behaving rationally. Okay. I, I have a question. Yeah, please. Can Bob use this, uh, this uh, model to actually bargain about the money Alice gives her? For example, if she gives me under 15, I always say no. Yes, so, so this is the same as in the, as in the prisoner's dilemma, no? So Bob uh, could uh, threaten uh, Alice and say, if you give me less than 50, I uh, will refuse, okay? Then Alice uh, may offer him uh, uh, 49. Should Bob refuse or not? I mean, he should not, he, he, he should not uh, accept. Eh? Sorry? He should not accept. If she gives her 49.9, he should not accept. Yes, he but this is not on. rational. This is oh. not rational. And it is not, I mean, if Alice knows that Bob is rational and Bob tells, tells him, uh, look, uh, I'm not going to accept anything below 50, then uh, Alice should not uh, find uh, this statement credible, okay? It is not credible because it is, uh, in the, uh, it is against the interest of uh, Bob himself to behave in this manner. Thank you. Now, excuse me, Professor. So I only, I'm, I can understand totally the argument that, well, something is better than nothing, but so if I would, if I would have guessed, I would have maybe put a uh, one in 99 because uh, I don't see, I don't know. I don't know. I don't see why zero and hundred. So, uh, the, the box with the zero and a hundred is rational, but the, the the box with one and ninety nine is irrational. Well, I don't know. I don't know it, if, if it's I. Not the best uh, is not uh, the best response. Uh, sorry, it's not the best response of Alice uh, to the um, strategy A of Bob. If Alice thinks that Bob is playing A the best response of Alice is to play zero. Okay. Uh, could you repeat that please? Uh, was, uh, so I was... If Alice, uh, if Bob is playing A, the best response of Alice uh, is to play zero. Oh yes, 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 yes. Okay. Sure. Yes. And so the fixed point of the best response is 0, 100. Okay, I get it. When, when you have to compute a Nash equilibrium in a game like this, you have to look at the fixed point of uh, uh, the best responses. Then you can think uh, whether this uh, makes sense, uh, whether this, uh, you can make all the speculation, but the, Nash equilibrium is defined in this way. And this is the way in which rational agents, uh, rational individual will behave. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, so uh, very good. So in the lecture notes, the, in the lecture that you find uh, 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 on the website, there is also this discussion about uh, um, uh, the tragedy of the commons. Uh, which is essentially the same situation as the prisoner's dilemma, but uh, uh, in a different context when there are uh, many agents. And again, it's a situation where uh, uh, there are many uh, players uh, that interact and uh, the social optimum 
is very different from the Nash equilibrium. So rational individuals end up uh, over exploiting a system and uh, at the end of it, uh, getting uh, uh, an outcome uh, which is much worse uh, than what they would get uh, at the social optimum. And uh, this is uh, uh, essentially what happens uh, whenever you have problems uh, uh, which involve uh, um, common goods. Okay, common goods uh, are goods uh, that uh, essentially everybody can use and, uh, and everybody can exploit. Okay, and, uh, but if everybody does so, then uh, this, uh, the quality of this good uh, deteriorates and, uh, and nobody, uh, there is no provision of this good by individuals. Okay. So this is a very interesting uh, uh, example and very relevant for uh, economic behavior. Say for example, uh, uh, climate change uh, is, uh, is one of these problems, you know, where essentially carbon emissions, uh, uh, so the atmosphere is one and essentially everybody has uh, incentives uh, to emit uh, uh, because of uh, industry production. But if everybody does so, then uh, uh, the, the atmosphere will get uh, uh, very bad and we will get global warming and uh, uh, okay, and we will have a lot of problems, okay? So this is a situation where essentially the Nash equilibrium, the uh, individual behavior, uh, uh, rational individual behavior uh, leads to very bad outcomes. Okay. Okay. So uh, now you can think uh, about uh, where the Nash equilibrium that we define is always unique. And the answer is clearly no. And uh, one example of this is what is called the battle of the sexes. Uh, so this is the game between uh, two persons uh, and she wants to go to the opera and he wants to go to Bochi Max uh, and, uh, but they love each other. So they better go hang out together than uh, just uh, one go to the opera and the other goes to boxing, okay? So the payoff matrix uh, can be something like this. Uh, and uh, so if this is uh, she, she prefers to go to the opera, to the boxing, uh, and, uh, and uh, he prefers to go to boxing uh, than to the opera. And you see that there are two Nash equilibria. One is where both go to the opera and the other is where both go to uh, boxing, okay? And uh, so there is another uh, uh, situation where uh, you see that Nash equilibrium, as we have defined it, uh, does not always exist. And this is the situation of uh, matching pennies. So in matching pennies uh, is, uh, well, the problem we have defined uh, uh, at the beginning. And you see that uh, uh, if I play uh, head, then the best response of uh, player two is to play tail, but the best response of player one is to play tail, uh, then uh, head, tail, et cetera, et cetera. So there is no fixed point of uh, um, best responses. And you ask why is uh, this situation? So there is no Nash equilibrium here, okay? But uh, uh, what you can realize is that uh, when the, this is, uh, I think uh, you should expect this because this is the same situation as uh, um, when you have a penalty kick in football, okay? So the, uh, the player has to choose whether to kick on the left or on the right and the goalkeeper has to uh, uh, decide whether to go on the left or on the right, okay? And uh, the goalkeeper wins uh, if uh, he goes in the same direction as uh, the player and uh, the player wins uh, uh, in the other situation, okay? So what is the best strategy for uh, the player in this case? Well, he should behave in a way uh, that is as random as possible. 
so he should not he should play this uh, he should kick uh, this penalty in a way that the goalkeeper has no clue of whether he's going to go on the left or on the right okay and he did the, this is the idea also in this match in pennies uh, so that you should introduce the random randomized strategies these are called mixed strategies and a mixed strategy is nothing but uh, a probability distribution on the possible strategies okay so these uh, strategies now are called uh, pure strategies and these uh, probability distribution are called uh, uh, mixed strategies so you can define a mixed strategy of an agent uh, the mixed strategy of the opponents uh, and uh, you can generalize the notion of the payoff uh, uh, matrix to the expected payoff okay uh, so this is the expected payoff under mixed strategy sigma i uh, again uh, uh, mixed strategy uh, sigma j okay and likewise you can generalize uh, the notion of the best response uh, uh, is just uh, the, the best response uh, to a mixed strategy sigma minus i is what maximizes the expected payoff, okay? And then uh, you can define and now what a Nash equilibrium is. Uh, uh, and it's exactly uh, the same as before. It's essentially uh, a Nash equilibrium is, uh, is a situation where whatever uh, you play, you cannot increase your expected payoff, okay? And then uh, the final thing, uh, so, okay, so this is uh, an example of matching pennies, how you uh, compute this uh, for matching pennies. And uh, maybe let me discuss this uh, and then uh, I'll just flash the result, uh, the main result. Uh. Okay, so how do you compute uh, uh, the Nash equilibrium in mixed strategy. So imagine that you have matching pennies and player one plays head with probability R and tail with probability one minus R. Player two plays head with probability Q and tail with probability one minus Q, okay? So then uh, what you have to do is to find out uh, what is the uh, uh, expected payoff of player one if you place a mixed strategy R against a mixed strategy Q. And, uh, and you, you do this by computing what is the expected payoff uh, uh, of playing head against Q or playing tail against uh, Q. And what you find is essentially that this is uh, two R minus one times two Q minus one. And this is uh, the opposite of what player two gets, okay? So given this function here, you can find out what is the best response for player one if he plays against Q, okay? And, uh, and you find that this has this shape. So the best response of player one against Q is uh, this uh, line here is, is essentially playing uh, um, uh, playing uh, 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 R equal to zero, so playing tail, as long uh, as uh, uh, player two plays uh, uh, um, uh, head with probability less than one half, because then he will get this one with a higher probability. And then uh, to play uh, tail uh, with probability, um, uh, to play head, sorry, with probability one, if Q is larger than one half. And the best response is exactly this line, this yellow line here, okay? You can do the same for player two and find what is the best response of player two against R. And you plot the best response of player two on these axis and uh, against R on the other axis. And here you get another line like this. And you find that the fixed point is exactly at the point one half, one half, which means that uh, the two players should uh, randomize. And this is the only Nash uh, equilibrium, okay? So, and uh, uh, to finish with this, uh, uh, essentially, uh, so 
Nash proved uh, in 1950 that any finite uh, normal form games uh, admits at least one Nash equilibrium in mixed strategies. So if you have a finite game, there will always be a, a Nash equilibrium in uh, mixed uh, strategies. Okay, so this is uh, 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 what I wanted uh, to tell you uh, today. So as an exercise, uh, you can compute uh, Nash equilibria, all the Nash equilibria in the battle of the sexes. And um, um, but I think uh, we have to stop here. Maybe if there are a couple of questions, uh, we can address them. Let's see what is in the chat. Uh, so we are still discussing about the ultimatum games. Uh, I think uh, this discussion can be endless. So um, is there any burning question? I, I remind you that uh, uh, you can find uh, these things uh, discussed uh, uh, more in detail on the website. And, um, but if there is some uh, burning question, then uh, we can address them or otherwise take a little bit of a break. Professor, I have a question. Yes, please. Um, I was just wondering what happens when our concept of rationality instead of relies on optimizing for the individual becomes objective for the communal. Okay, okay, so this is, uh, so what I'm discussing here is actually called non-cooperative game theory. Okay, non-cooperative because essentially players do not cooperate, okay? There is another branch of game theory which is called the cooperative game theory which is the branch of game theory that tells you how you should, uh, for example, uh, design a treaty, a treaty between different parties, between different nations, for example, no? And, um, and, and that is a different uh, subject that I'm not uh, uh, discussing here. So what we are discussing here is non-cooperative uh, games. Thank you. Thank you for the answer, because, uh, for the question, because this is very important. Professor. Yeah. I have a question. Uh, I remember stu studying Nash equilibrium in the context of networks. Uh, is there a difference between uh, net, uh, Nash equilibrium networks and in this context of game theory, or is it basically the same thing? Or is there a plus uh, in studying with networks or something like that? OK, so. Um... So the, the so the, the so this is uh, the definition of uh, games uh, that you find in uh, books uh, of uh, game theory. Okay, so this is how a game is defined. Then uh, there has been a lot of uh, 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 say research and a lot of work uh, uh, by different people by uh, studying uh, games uh, on uh, networks, okay? And uh, now the, uh, so the, so when, I mean, if you really, um, so uh, putting games on network means that you have the, you have to define this, uh, payoff matrices uh, and these strategies uh, uh, for uh, agents uh, on the network, okay? And um, which, is, which is not very, uh, so I, I mean, what I, what I would like to say is that uh, as you have seen is that already in a simple situation, uh, the mathematics, uh, can be very complicated, okay? So if you, uh, and you can extend uh, what I've been saying here to any complicated situation, 
But the question is whether you will be able to compute Nash equilibria or not, okay? Uh, in many cases, uh, uh, people have studied uh, simple processes, uh, like, for example, uh, you can study what is called the voter model. So the voter model is a model of uh, opinion uh, uh, dynamics, uh, and you can study it on the, on the network, on a network, okay? So this is not a game. I mean, it's not a, it's not a model that you can uh, really define as being uh, really a game, because uh, if you think about it, uh, well, there is no utility function, there is no rational, really rational behavior uh, behind it, okay? So, um, um, yeah, so I, I don't know whether uh, I added something or I made more confusion. No, I think I think it's 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 clear right now. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so uh, for mixed strategies, the Nash equilibrium is now dependent on the probability Q of using a strategy. Yes, uh, the, the, so the, the Nash equilibrium specifies what is the mixed strategy. So, in, by the way, the strategies S is a particular case of a mixed strategy when Q is equal to zero or Q is equal to one. Okay, so mixed strategy, when you go from strategy to mixed strategy, you enlarge the space of possible strategies. Okay, but the uh, original strategies are, are still there. Okay, so I think uh, we need to take at least five minutes break before uh, uh, Guido's uh, uh, lecture. So thank you very much and uh, we'll uh, uh, meet again tomorrow.